If you leave a like on this video right now, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Your favorite character that's not added into Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links will get added to Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links. At least, that's what I tell myself every day. What's up everybody, Wad007 here, and welcome back to another Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links video. In today's Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links video, we're going to be taking a look at some brand new leaks for the game, specifically for Agami and his upcoming roaming event for Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links. If you guys remember in the upcoming updates, and one of the things that it stated in early July, a mysterious duelist will appear, and personally for me, I did not know who the upcoming duelist was going to be in early July, but some people in the comment section and some other YouTubers talked about it, and they said that it was going to be Agami, and these leaks that I'm going to talk about in today's video is going to confirm that yes, we're going to be getting an Agami event and it's going to be a roaming Agami event which is kind of lame because we've been waiting for Agami to get added Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links for how long now and now he's getting a roaming event not in a lock event it's kind of ridiculous in my opinion but it's still going to be cool to see him in Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links and see what's popping with him and in today's video I'm going to talk about all of his new rewards that we're going to be able to farm for once he gets added into Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links and then on top of that later in the video I'm going to talk about some new NPC cards that are pretty cool and on top of that I'm going to talk about one of the new Kalen cards that got leaked in today's batch of updates so yeah that's what we're going to talk about in today's Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links leak video. Without further ado, let's get into the video. So for this first section of the video, we're going to take a look at all of the new leak cards for Agami. And the first card we're going to take a look at is a card called the End of Anubis. I actually talked about this in my upcoming updates video because it was one of the cards that got confirmed in the upcoming updates. But let's just do a quick refresher on this card. So the End of Anubis is a dark level 6 fiend effect monster. While this card is based upon the field, the effects of spell, trap, and monster cards that target 8 cards in the graveyard or that activate in the graveyard are negated. This card has 2500 attack and 0 defense. Now my first impressions on this card is that this card is pretty neat because it just stops a lot of graveyard shenanigans. It's like a different version of Necker Valley because with Necker Valley it states that you can't move cards from the graveyard into the banner zone or back onto the field but this one states you just stop the effect altogether so if your opponent activates an effect from the graveyard it gets negated. If your opponent tries to target one of the cards in the graveyard maybe special summon it back in the field it's negated so it just stops it outright. It doesn't move them anywhere but it just stops it outright which is pretty cool. Now the thing is though is that this is a tribute summon monster monster and even though it is a fiend and a dark monster there's not going to be too many ways to su special summon it like since it is a fiend and a dark monster there will be ways to do it but in most cases you're just gonna have to tribute summon this card in order to get it onto the field but if you do get it on the field it does stop your opponent from doing a lot of disaffection in the graveyard to be honest this card in my opinion is probably just going to be good for just farm decks in the future just in case if there's a farm deck that really utilizes um or just in case if a new npc deck comes into Yu Gi Oh links or a new npc event comes into Yu Gi Oh duel links and you need a way to stop that NPC from utilizing the graveyard. You can probably use the end of the Anubis and you'll have an easier time summoning this lad due to the fact that you're going against an NPC. But for any like competitive play, I don't know yet. I genuinely don't think it'll happen, but still, it's a pretty neat card. The next card we're going to take a look at is Mystical Knight of Jackal. This is an SR card that you can farm for when the Agami event comes into the game, and it's a light level 7 Beast War effect monster that states, when this card destroys one monster on your opponent's side of the field and sends it to your opponent's graveyard, as a result of battle, you can return the card to the top of your opponent's deck. This card has 2700 attack and 1200 defense. Now, for what it's worth, the effect is honestly not too bad whatsoever, because if you get rid of one of your opponent's monsters, and you are able to get rid of it with this card specifically, your opponent's monster is probably not that good of a card. So the fact that you got rid of that lame card and put it back to the top of their deck means that your opponent can't really draw into the combos they need to draw into, and therefore you're going to have an easier time winning the duel. But at the end of the day, all this is is a level 7 Beast Warrior effect monster. There's not really too much Beast Warrior support in the game. Maybe you can combo this in like a hazy deck, maybe? Nah, you wouldn't even be able to combo it in a hazy deck the light attribute monster anyways like this card is cool but it's like not going to be able to get summoned all the time because it's a light level 7 beast warrior monster and there's not really too many cards that i could think of on the top of my head that could combo well with this card and then yeah just on top of it it's just kind of just like a whatever card like it has a cute effect it has an okay effect but i don't think it's going to see any competitive success whatsoever but it is a neat card going to be cool to farm for but yeah just the ur card and this sr card are very like niche in my opinion that i don't know how worth it it is going to be to farm this agami event that we'll be getting later in this month that's for sure but it's a neat card in my opinion maybe there's something I'm missing with it but eh, I really don't think so next card to take a look at is a card called alien inventrator which is going to be a rare card that you can farm from Agami this is an earth level 2 reptile effect monster that states once per turn this card can move to an adjacent horizontal unoccupied monster zone if no spell trap or monster card on your opponent's side of the field is the same color this card this card can attack your opponent directly this card has 800 attack and 500 defense who would have thought that Agami would get us some more alien support in Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links 
not me. But nonetheless, though, this card is an eh card at the end of the day, and it's not going to bring aliens back, that's for sure. Um, it is a neat effect where the fact that you can do a direct attack against your opponent if the adjacent monster zone is not, uh, that doesn't have any, like, spell trap or monster cards in your opponent's side of the field. If there's none of those on the adjacent side for Alien Infiltrator, you're able to do a direct attack with this card, which is cool. But still, we have cards in the game like Great Keeper's Vassal and that farm deck to just guarantee to get a direct attack with Secret Pass of the Treasures and whatnot. So probably won't see Alien Infiltrator anytime soon in a farm deck, in my opinion. And other than that, I don't think it's going to see any competitive play either because it is an alien card, but at the same time, aliens haven't seen some play and this card doesn't really combo with the alien archetype. And on top of that, there's like just a lot of cards in the game that can just direct your attack opponent or direct attack your opponent without any extra, you know, restrictions or whatnot. So it's a mad card in my opinion. It is a rare card after all. Cool to see that we're getting more cards that relate to the like monster zones and whatnot because it was definitely more of a new gimmick that was introduced to the Varane's era and now that gimmick's getting added to Duel Links, which is super cool. But yeah, it's kind of like an ability in my opinion. But cool card, cool artwork, and yeah, that's it with that card. Next card we're going to take a look at is Emperor Sem, which is a light level 4 fiend effect monster. Each time you tribute summon a monster, each player can select one card from their graveyard and return it to the top of your deck. This card has 1300 attack, 2200 defense. Literally, the only good thing about this card, in my opinion, is just how beefy its defense is for a 4 star monster. 2200 defense is definitely really good for a 4 star monster, but other than that, the effect is super mediocre. This card needs to be face up on the field anyways to trigger this mediocre effect, and all it does is just let you put cards from your graveyard back to the top of the deck, and it happens for both players. So in most cases, you're just going to be helping out your opponent more than yourself, and it's just whatever. Not a good effect. Very meh card, but the 2200 defense is not too shabby, but that's just kind of my thoughts with this card. Nothing too crazy, in my opinion. So the next card we're going to take a look at right here is this card called Garncia Elephantis. I don't know how to pronounce that card's name, but I got to tell you one thing about this card. This boy is thick. Look at this thick boy right here. This is the thickest boy in the land, that's for sure. Easily one of the best cards that we can farm for from Agami. This card is a level 7 Earth. Earth Beast Warrior mo monster that states a monster so heavy that each step rocks the earth. This card has 2400 attack and 2000 defense and yeah I gotta pull three copies of this card absolutely because it's just a thick boy that's for sure. The next card we're going to take a look at is this card called Increon or something weird like that. This is a level 5 water aqua normal monster that states, This strange creature hides in the deep dark corners of the seven seas. This card has 1700 attack, 1400 defense. It's a normal rarity that you can farm for from the boy Agami. But yeah, very meh card. It is a normal rarity card after all, but still super meh. The next and final card we're going to take a look at for the Agami rewards is this card called Strange Slime. And let me tell you what, the card artwork reminds me of Brad on a Tuesday night. Don't ask me why I know that, I just do. But anyways, though, this is a card. It is a water level one aqua normal monster that states a slime that can morph and adopt the shape and size of any monster it chooses. This card is 400 attack, 300 defense. Again, super mad card. Goofy artwork, though. Gonna farm for three copies of this card because it's just a goofy artwork. But yeah, it's nothing crazy, that's for sure. It is a normal rarity after all. And yeah, that is actually it for all the Agami rewards. Now, for the next segment of this video, I'm gonna talk about two cards that are NPC only cards. These are not cards that are gonna be attainable to us anytime soon, but I'm still gonna take a look at them nonetheless because maybe sometime in the future they will be unlockable to us. And the first card I'm going to talk about and one of the cards that you've been seeing in the background of today's video is Blue Eyes Twin and Burst Dragon. Like I said, it's not a card that we'll be able to get anytime soon. It's an NPC only a card, but still cool to take a look at. This card is a light level 10 dragon fusion monster that takes two Blue Eyes White Dragons to fusion summon into it. it. Must be either fusion summon or special summon by sending the above monsters you control to the graveyard, in which this case you do not use polymerization. This card cannot be destroyed by battle. This card can make up to two attacks on monsters during each battle phase. At the end of the damage step, when this card attacks an opponent's monster, but the opponent's monster is not destroyed at battle, you can banish that opponent's monster. This card has 3,000 attack and 2,500 defense. Now, this card is a very solid card, and to get two Blue Eyes White Dragons out on the field is not too difficult whatsoever. And what's nice about this effect, too, is the fact that you do not need to waste copies of polymerization in your deck to fusion summon into this card, because you just need two Blue Eyes White Dragons on the field, which is not too bad whatsoever. The fact that this card cannot get destroyed at battle is pretty spicy, too, so you're going to need to use other effects to get rid of this card. If this card did get attainable to us um, in Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links, it wouldn't be that big of a deal to like get rid of it because we have a lot of cards in the game that can get rid of monsters without by battle but still it's a good effect nonetheless the fact that like, this uh card can do two attacks is pretty spicy too makes sense because this is blue eyed twin burst dragon and then also if you're you don't destroy your opponent's monster by attacking with this guy you just banish your opponent's monster instead and this is not a target effect so you can get around some of your opponent's monsters which is pretty nice which is really cool so this card is not too shabby whatsoever i can easily see this getting added into a box sometime in the future i doubt it will be an npc card that we'll get 
idea, but I know in Konami they'd probably just put this card as a cover art card for some box in the future. But yeah, like I said, NPC only card, not going to be attainable to us anytime soon, but super cool to take a look at nonetheless. Next up, we're going to take a look at an insanely broken card called Shape Snatch. Sadly, this card is not going to be attainable to us anytime soon. It's an NPC only card, which makes me really sad because I would love to see this card. But at the same time, like I said, it's extremely broken. So it is not a surprise that we're not getting this broken card right here. But this is a dark level 5 machine normal monster that states a bow tie with horrible power and attacks the opponent by controlling others. This card has 1200 attacks, 1700 defense. Wish we could get this card soon. Maybe it'll get added as a UR card in a future box. Who knows? But yeah. Super good card right here, can't wait to get this in Duel Links, but sadly it's currently an NPC only card. Now for the final part of today's Duel Links video, we're going to take a look at some of these new Matt and Sleeve IDs. As you guys can see with the Matt and Sleeve IDs, we have some new IDs for Callan Kessler, Carly Carmine, Infinity Doom Dragon, and Fortune Fairy Akari. Now the reason why I wanted to talk about these new Matt and Sleeve IDs is because one of the Matt and Sleeve IDs that we're getting is Infinity Doom Dragon, which is a card that we do not have in Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links. As you guys know with my upcoming updates video is that at the end of the upcoming updates video, we did find Find out that we're actually getting a brand new character in Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links and that brand new character is going to be Crash Town Kallen and it would make a lot of sense if his ace monster we would get from unlocking that character you would be Infernity Doom Dragon and I think the Matt and Sleeve IDs that you see right here kind of prove it and due to that I wanted to take a look at Infernity Doom Dragon and just talk about it with you guys because it's a really cool card and we're most likely going to get it later in this month so yeah let's go take a look at this card real quick. Infernity Doom Dragon is a dark level 8 dragon sinker monster it takes one dark tuner plus one or more non tuner monsters. Monsters. Once per turn, if you have no cards in your hand, you can select one monster opponent controls. Destroy that monster and inflict damage to your opponent equal to half its attack. This card cannot attack during the same turn you activate this effect. This card has 3,000 attack and 2,400 defense. And I gotta say, this card is actually pretty spicy. So if you get this card on the field, then hopefully when Kallen comes out into Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links, we'll get some really spicy Infernity cards because Infernity is a deck that just goes off when you have no cards in your hand. And if you summon this guy on the field, you basically get to target your opponent's monsters, or it does say select, so it doesn't target. You get to take one of your opponent's monsters, send it to the graveyard, and then inflict damage to your opponent equal for half its attack. That's a destructive effect, and it makes sense that you cannot attack with this card in the turn you activate this effect, because if you would, this card would just be tier zero if you just get it out on the field. But yeah, super, super powerful effect right there, and I'm looking forward to see what Infernity support we get in Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links, because there's a high chance that we'd be get getting some broken Infernity support when Kallen gets out, and maybe they would add a new box in the game that is related to Infernities, and we get a bunch of cool Infernity support because I think it's been a long time overdue that Infernity's um you know been in Duel Links and have not been meta it's been a long overdue for them to finally become meta and I'm looking forward for the opportunity for Infernity to become meta because it would be pretty spicy to see in Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links that is for sure. Well that's gonna be it for today's Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links leak video I hope you guys enjoyed and if you guys did leave a like on the video down below and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links content and yeah that's gonna be it for me thank you guys so much for watching and I'll go see you guys in the next Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links video. Adios everybody.